Alrighty, we're going to continue our study on the attributes of God and we're going to be looking at the attribute of mercifulness or mercy as I've titled it and the first thing I would like to ask is well I have a question <coughs> doesn't justice come before mercy? yes but this time we're going to call it the backwards study okay <laughs> No. Give me and actually, and actually, yeah. And, actually, and by the way, it actually would have helped if we would have gone through justice first, because <laughs> because I, I'm gonna have to get a little bit into it, but which is fine. It'll be okay. it'll only be an introduction so for you, right? Copy your outline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so what happens is that well, the first thing I wanted to ask is, how do you guys understand mercy? What is mercy? What do you guys think is mercy? No looking at the outline, that's please. When you, that's when you actually, <laughs> when you're in school, when you're holding another guy's hands and you're trying to force him back until he says uncle. <laughs> Isn't that called wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. When God doesn't give you what you deserve. You think, well, that's a, actually, that's a good, good way of putting it. That's a good way of putting I guess a, a more technical, a technical, um, a technical definition of mercy would be uh, the withholding of, of justice basically what you said but more specifically the withholding of justice the kind of like a, something that a judge or even a governor can do by giving someone a pardon something that that is not owed or deserved it's something that is unilaterally given okay. from one person to another well, well, let me ask now let me ask this, this next question what would be the difference between grace and mercy or do you think they're synonymous and if you and, hmm? I'd say they're different. Okay. How how would you describe the difference? Well, grace is also giving you something that you don't deserve, but it's not like the justice is not involved. It's not um, you know, it's not um, withholding your just punishment. Yes, it's, it's it doesn't have. It's not in the context of judgment, you could say, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm not, I don't think they're synonymous. I just think that mercy is a form of grace. Okay. I've, I've heard the definition that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll right. give that a charity. <laughs> grace, no, but I'm grace, talking Grace is unmerited favor in the place of merited wrath. That's from J.I. Packer's Knowing God. Really? Okay. But uh, yeah, the reason I ask is because, you know, some people think that they're synonymous, but, you know, there is a there is a technical difference between the two and so I wanted to go ahead and start by looking at uh, the first couple sentences and if we look at the first one if I could actually have you read it Johnny mm. the quotation from Systematic Theology? yes from Charles mm -hmm. Hodge mercy is kindness towards the miserable and includes pity forbearance compassion gentleness which the scriptures so abundantly ascribe to God Charles Hodge, Systematic Theology, Goodness of God, page 427. Okay. Would you mind, Andy, if I had you read the uh, next the next sentence? Sure. Uh, mercy, defined as used in Matthew 9.13 and Matthew 12.7, is the outward manifestation of pity. It assumes need on the part of him who receives it and resources adequate to meet the need on the part of him who shows it. So in other words, what, what we can see here is, I particularly like um, Charles Hodges' description of it, which is that, you know, it is a form of pity. And I like how he puts that it's, you know, that it's something that is given to, to the miserable. But I think that uh, the very things that you guys were talking about, dealing with the issue of, of justice, for the most part, it does involve not giving, you know, the particular judgment you know, keeping the judgment on, you know, the circumstance or the individual that deserved it. Mm -hmm. And so on, on that point, I would like to go to uh, point one. And if we can go ahead and read that, I'll go ahead and read it. It says, the Bible is very clear that our God is a merciful God. Psalm 86.15, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth. Psalm 145.8 The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger 
and great and loving kindness. But God is also a just God. For this reason, He is worthy to be praised. And I have a, and I put Psalm fifty nine sixteen. And would you mind, Caleb, if I had you read that? Sure. Funny question to ask. Hmm? Would you mind if you read that? And I said, sure, which means I would mind. So. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll, 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 I will show you mercy. <laughs> I think you just shouldn't ask him to read scripture anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read it from the Apocrypha? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, okay. 59 16. But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Okay. Well, that's an interesting translation. Mine, mm-hmm. Because mine, mine had it under, had, instead of your love said mercy. So, ah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but basically the, the gist of, the, of, of this uh, particular passage is that, you know, that one of the things that we need to do is praise God. Praise, you know, be thankful to God and praise Him for the fact that He is merciful. You know, and as we see here in the, in the psalm, well, I think the the way it phrases steadfast love mm-hmm. kind of shows that even when we were obviously not deserving, he's steadfast in his love. So yes. kind of conveys mercy a little bit. Maybe not. Well, well, before, the thing is that the thing is that you know it kind of goes back to what Johnny said that when you when you look at mercy, it it is a form of grace, and at the same time, you you could say that it is also a form of love. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why it, it makes an appeal to his loving kindness. You know, and uh, I think that it, you know. So even in the context, if we were to use a, you know the term love or, or mercy, I think in that particular sense it w- it would be synonymous in the context. Mm-hmm. Now, if we continue, it says the Lord is also just and has given His law, which requires all men to follow it, as Romans uh, chapter two, five and six tells us. God will judge all. Let's take a look at that. Romans uh, chapter 2. See, and it was verses 5 and 6, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Would you mind reading that, Carlos? Sure. He says he doesn't want to read it. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, I'm not all merciful. So. This, this is senior, though, right? Huh? <laughs> yeah. But Junior's listening, so watch out. Okay, Again. <laughs> okay verse five. Um, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasure itself that unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Okay. So, so in other words, we see here that you know, God will be judging men according to how he behaves. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then it says, and Romans one eighteen to nineteen reveals the anger of God against transgression. So let's go ahead and uh, turn to the uh, previous chapter. And Cindy, would you mind if I can have you read those two verses, eighteen uh, through nineteen? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. Okay. So once again, so now we we not only understand that God, of course, requires men to keep, you know, to keep the law, and He's going to judge them by it, but we also see that there's an anger that God has for the fact that you know that we are not following according to his law now if we go to uh, A here on the questions number one is if God is just and must punish transgression how can he also be merciful in light of, of knowing the two facts that we just stated that God requires men in other words since, and this goes back to what we were talking about with, with the whole issue mm-hmm. that we were talking about with uh, our brother here since God is just mm-hmm. and he has to deal 
with sin and he has to deal with with you know transgression mm-hmm. and the and, and the scriptures reveal to us that he is angry towards it how do we reconcile the fact that he that he's just but yet he shows mercy how, how do you how, how do you guys see a reconciliation of the two Romans 3 Romans 3 yeah <laughs> in reference to what to oh, uh, uh-huh. uh, Romans 3 um, uh-huh. uh, I would say um, verses 19 through um, to 26 to 26 yeah you know what let's go ahead and read them would you mind reading it no would that be good mm-hmm. no that's right no <laughs> I still don't want to read it though. What? No. That means yes. Yeah, no means yes. Depends on the context, right? (laughs) No means yes, so let's not read the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Yeah. Excellent. That's an excellent excellent answer. Because that that, that does provide uh, uh, the answer to it. And as a matter of fact, uh, the, the second question I ask is, what does First uh, Peter three one tell us? And so I wanna I wanna keep in mind from with what you just read, you know, with what Brother Andrew just read, with uh, along with uh, you know with what we're gonna find in First uh, Peter three one. I'm sorry. Did it? Uh, yeah, something. Yeah, something's wrong. <laughs> second Peter, maybe. Huh? Yeah, let's try second Peter. Maybe I, um, I might have no, no, missed first it. Peter. First Peter, three one. Yeah, but I think I got the wrong, the wrong verse. Is it in the same way, you wives be submissive to your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was, what? You know, what? I was thinking of something else at that time. <laughs> you, uh, you know what? Right, Sandy. You know what? Let's underline that. It's <laughs> 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 a little star, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and bolt. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, you know what? I, I apologize for that. I must have. I'm not sure if I got the book wrong, but you uh, must have been quoting Romans three. <laughs> uh, <I know. laughs> Probably must have been. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. But I mean, but yeah. The but the point of the passage was that you know, was dealing with the issue that that uh, that it's through the sacrifice of Christ, which God has shown mercy unto us, and that that's why. You know, God can show the mercy that He does because not only is He, you know, not giving us our due punishment, but He Himself is providing, you know, the propitiation, you know, the satisfaction for that. And that and that's what, what what was the gist of what I wanted to show. Showing that, you know, because one of the reasons why I'm one of the reasons why I'm trying to point this out is because for instance, you know how earlier I kinda of made the comment about being all merciful? Mm-hmm. I've never I, I, I may be wrong. But have you guys ever heard at any time in the scriptures as God being referred to as all merciful? Not off the top of my head. I've never heard that. But what's interesting is that you know in in Islam they will refer to uh, you know to Allah as all merciful. And the funny thing is one of the problems that I have with Islam is that for instance they teach that if you know if if you sin then obviously God is angry in the same way and you know, wants to and wants to require it of you, but at the same time, you know, if you appeal to him, 
it says that He will forgive you. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that, you know, yes, and they, and they refer to Him as all-merciful, which is inconsistent because at times, you know, there is no mercy. So if you're all-merciful, that means you'd have to be merciful at all times, right? right. <laughs> you know, so so He's, you know, you don't have that mercy. And then second, they don't realize uh, the need for, for propitiation. They basically just say there's no need for it. They don't, you know, they're not acknowledging it in, in the same way that we in Christianity do. We, we, we understand the grace of God there is a grace to God you know and there is a mercy to God but at the same time you know there is a day of reckoning you know and there is a fulfillment you know or a satisfaction for them mm-hmm. so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to state that that that's one of the big differences between the God of the scriptures and you know and the other concepts of God that are out there because even if you go into even the Hindus, you know, they have these different views of these different gods, and they have gods that have absolutely no mercy. You know, they have one I think called Kali, which is you know the god of destruction. I think it's, it's what it's referred to. I mean, there's no mercy there. But when we look at our God, like He says, you know, He creates evil, He cre- He brings calamity, but at the same time, there's mercy, there's justice, there's grace, there's love. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we, we'll go on to uh, point number two. Okay, in Exodus 33, verses 16 through 19, we read, Moses pleads with the Lord to find favor with him and his people. The Lord declares, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. Therefore we understand that the Lord does as he chooses and gives mercy on whom he wills. God can never cease to be merciful for this is a quality of the divine essence. And here's a reference to uh, Psalms 116.5. Could I have you read that, Johnny? Sure. If you can just look it up and find it. I don't remember. But there's only one Psalm 116. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Psalms? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> although, although I beg to differ. I got one here. You got one there. Your brother over there has got one. There's a lot of them, brother. <laughs> I remember Pastor mm-hmm. Earl. So that means you have to simultaneously read them at the same time. <laughs> yes. We got to read. Ju- we got to read Junior, Papa, and all the heretical ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at one sixteen five, right? Yes. Uh, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. So it's appealing to that. He says, but the exercise of His mercy is regulated by His sovereign will. And then it says, This must be so, for there is nothing outside of Himself which obliges Him to act. If there were, that something would be supreme, and God would cease to be God. Do you guys understand that? Amen. In other words, God is a merciful God, but the mercy, you know, that He has is a mercy that is based on His will. So... We, exactly and so in other words you know it isn't it isn't something that is merited because clearly just as grace is something that's unmerited mercy is the same in nature Amen. and so the point here is you know we're establishing not only that God you know is merciful in light of justice but the fact that even when he exercises his mercy it's based on his desire on his will as as you know as a sovereign God and that was a that was actually a quote from from Arthur Pink. Since I don't have the book, I put the uh, the uh, the H T uh, what is it the uh, U R L. So if that's of any help. <laughs> now putting a so then the following statement is in light of this, in what ways does he give mercy? Let us consider the following text. So we're gonna take a look at the next uh, four texts, okay. and I want. And we're gonna take we're gonna take a look at different ways in which God you know exercises His mercy. So you wanna assign a text to everybody? Or? Yes, I think that would be a good idea. So, well, brother, if you don't mind, we'll start from here. Okay. We'll go around. Okay. So, so we'll start with with uh, Psalms. I mean Psalm. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Psalm 145, verse 9. 
Uh, the Lord is good to all and His mercies are over all His works. Okay. So what do we see there? His works um, are mercy. For, uh, was, was it um, common grace? Yes. <laughs> I even see it as far as His creation. Mm-hmm. That the Lord, from here we see that, you know, it isn't just a particular mercy that He exercises, but also a general mercy because he has a love for all and all his works I mean we're all the you know the universe and ourselves are the work of God so we see that the mercy actually can go through throughout his whole universe mm-hmm. to the very creation and uh, okay would you mind reading uh, Caleb uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 45 sure so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Okay. Um, let me read one verse before that. Sure. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I know some of the other older versions add a couple of words there. Curse me. Yeah, I had a couple of words. Says except for Osama bin Laden. And then you know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I noticed that in some versions there's like more extended. Mm-hmm. It's like you should love. Um, You're looking for the long version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the extended version. <laughs> I'm wondering if it might be a different gospel. Yeah, like a little Might be. A, oh, may, no, maybe. Yeah. I, maybe a. I remember parallel. the Matthew. Um, what is that one reading? Is, is, your, like is your translation based on the Westcott and Hort? <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's the, the shorter version. But you say no, mine is Texas. I had a New King James that uh, that had more there. Yeah, well, what? How does uh, Carlos is read? You mean senior? Mm-hmm. I have the New King James. If you want, I can also well, read the New, New, New King James and King oh. James are ver- are based on the same uh, Texas receptor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mine says, "But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you." Do good to them That's the one. that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. See that that all of that's not in my version. Really? Okay. Well, it's because but, it's I, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And then yours goes on, but mine just says, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for He makes His sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on really? the unjust. How is, what is the American standard say? Well, mine has a shorter one like him. He, yeah. Because we're, ours are based on the Alexandrian text types, uh, which says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And that's where it stops on verse 44. And, and it probably is that the, uh, the lo- longer reading would be because the scribes were probably so familiar with reading it some ways that they would try to make them the same. And Luke's version probably reads that way and he probably read. I mean, I haven't, we'd have to mm-hmm. take the time to look at Luke's version, but sometimes they would do that mm-hmm. to kind of make them the same. It's the same thing with the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, where if you look at Matthew's version and Mark's and Luke's, they're not the same. Uh, and so sometimes what scribes would do is they would add to Matthew what, or ma- add to Mark what Matthew wrote and or Luke and so forth. Yeah, see, that's why we have different Gospels. The Lord made sure we didn't lose any word. <laughs> Each one got a piece. <laughs> no, but going back to this, obviously, we, we this is a passage that, you know, particularly in, in the reform, in the reform community, mm-hmm. we recognize clearly as being a showing of common grace, right? But it is also a show of mercy, right? But my question would be to you, what do you think is the difference between this passage and the last passage though what difference do you see oh you mean the one of his works yeah compared to this one well he mentions the just and the unjust and this one or he just mentions over all his works and the other the point yeah the point would be that he has a general mercy for all and that even includes the unrighteous you know, and even in this context, there are there are things that even the unrighteous are blessed that the righteous are blessed with. Because here, you, you know, that's that's what we're dealing with in context, right? You know, the righteous and the unrighteous. And the blood, right, unrighteous sometimes get more blessings, earthly blessings. Than they do. That's true. That's a good point. I mean, I, I never even you know thought about that, but that's a good point. So you know, 
So if your brother has a nicer car, don't envy him, please. <laughs> the Lord gave it to him. Take it up with the Lord. <laughs> okay. Let's go. To, okay, and then, um, okay, so just to let you guys know, the first two verses, you know, were intended to deal more with uh, common. Co common grace, you know. Okay. But now we're going to look at uh, Titus 3 5. It's kind of funny to call it common grace. I know the reason why it's called that, but it's really. There's nothing. Grace. Yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. There's nothing common about, about it. it. Yeah. 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 Let's see, Titus. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what do we see here? It doesn't Saving. use the word labor, by the way. Labor? Yeah. Where? Labor of Not by works of righteousness, which you have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. but according to His mercy, He saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Who He poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Well, obviously here, we're starting to get into particular redemption. Mm -hmm. Because in this case... This is something that... It's only for the elect. Yes. It's only for the elect. And the interesting thing was... um, I didn't really get, you know, get into... I didn't put it into my outline. But one of the things that, uh, that I did read that was rather interesting that Arthur Pink did, you know, talk about is the fact that if you look at angels, you know, angels obviously are Careful also... because Carlos is a Dodger fan. Was that... Oh, we're we're, we're talking <laughs> of, we're talking about the real thing, not fakers. You know, what I mean? <laughs> 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 just kidding. Get it? Yeah, I get this. No, but no, but when we're when we're dealing with the subject of angels, you know, one of the things that I did find interesting is that you know Arthur Pink was saying that mercy is something that you know is particularly given to us because when you take in consideration, you know, the angels of heaven, they don't receive mercy. They do receive grace. In the sense that they are gifted with things that they don't merit, but in terms of receiving mercy, you know they don't. There's nothing in the scriptures to indicate actually that they would receive the mercy that we do. As a matter of fact, we know that there were angels that sinned. The fallen angels. Exactly. You know, and they don't get mercy. That's a good point. They don't get mercy. Yeah, they are not given. They are not. They are not. Jesus didn't die for them. You know what I mean? They don't get they don't get mercy. They're not judged. Even, not even from the Dodgers. Huh? <laughs> See, they're going they're on their way to hell, man. And it's gonna <laughs> but um but you know, but the thing is, yeah, and, and you know, and I did and I did that and I did find that particularly interesting because, you know, it really makes us you know, kinda really think about our situation. Amen. You know? It's a very special it's a very special grace to say that we receive in that. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like we're not even as spectacular as angels or anything like that. oh which is a great point by the way because you know like is Jesus because that's one of the things that he was saying that you know how when it says that Jesus was made lower, lower than lower the angels, angels you know the indication part of the indication is because you know the angels are greater in power than we are they outrank us yeah they outrank us and that's a grace that, they, that they've been given and yet they don't receive mercy yeah. you, you know yeah, we knuckleheads down here receive mercy amen you know what? I would rather receive the mercy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. but uh, yeah. No. Well, going on. Uh, so, Andy, would you mind Isaiah, reading Isaiah forty nine ten? No, I wouldn't mind. Yes. <laughs> By the way, that's the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because or else, yeah, exactly. Or else would be yes. And well, maybe he won't read it because when they said they didn't want to read it, they read it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's true. saying he did. It's kind of like that story about the father with the two sons and he tells them both to do something yeah. and one says yes I will do it and he doesn't do it yeah. Yeah. and the other one says no I won't but he does yeah. oh yeah yeah. that's how he asked that's the real story under the story <laughs> You gotta be careful. Well. You keep doing it, you know. You're gonna you're gonna mind boggle him and have to turn into like Bart Ehrman or something. <laughs> I'm skeptical, you know. What I mean? <laughs> Forty nine ten. Forty nine ten. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind or nor sun shall strike them, for he had, for he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of water will guide them. Okay, we'd have to read. We would have had to read from the beginning of the chapter, which this is an interesting chapter because it's, it's actually dealing with the Messiah and the work that he's going to do. But in particular here, in this particular passage, it's not dealing with... Uh, 
Well, I guess in essence, in, in, in a sense it could spiritually be, but it's really dealing with Israel. And so we see here that even with a particular people, you know, God had a mercy with Israel, with His chosen people. So that's another context that we see in which uh, the mercy of God also applies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have any comments? Anything you'd like to add in light of these other verses? Anybody want to give a five minute preaching? We're, we're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No quotations from John Gill, John Owen? No. Mm, they're too lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> what about Wayne Grudem? Going once, going twice? Grudem? Uh-huh. Any Grudem? And everybody looks like Caleb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have his comments. Yeah. Pockets are taken everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hamburger and yeah. All righty. We'll 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 leave it at that. If we go to uh, we'll go to point three, and it says that knowing knowing that God is merciful, and seeing the different ways in which God is merciful, what is the nature of His mercy according to the Scriptures? Mm-hmm. So I've got I six five. If you want me to go ahead and read it. Let's okay. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Let's see. Let's. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. Okay. So what's the nature of the mercy there? But that he's willing to forgive. Uh, Psalm 86, verse 5. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Basically, oh, it's that God is is uh, is always said to forgive. You know, is that we as humans, you know, sometimes you may wrong someone. And you, that person asks you for forgiveness, and you're not at the particular time in the state of mind to forgive them. You need some time to cool off before you can actually stew in your juices, and then come back and see, okay, he made a mistake. And then you know, it's kind of like if you go, someone goes to your house and you know breaks a priceless artifact, and they say, please forgive me. It might take some time for you to forgive him because we're human, but <coughs> for God, or get out of jail. Out of jail. <laughs> uh, but with with uh, God. He, he is always in the right state of mind to forgive us if we have a truly uh, repentant and contrite heart. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and of course, forgiveness means that God is not going to repay you the wrong that you did. Yeah. Uh, with another, with another um, uncomfortable situation for you. Yes. So, um, that and, uh, yeah. my, my and along, along with the fact that it says that it's abundant. Mm-hmm. It's an abundant mercy. Mm-hmm. So it shows you that, you know, it's not. It's not that God is a short tempered mm-hmm. or, or or very little mercy that He has to give out. He actually has abundant mercy. Matter of fact, I even like, mm-hmm. in light of what you said, if, mm-hmm. if we if we go on and read verse six, it, you know, the psalmist here, which is David, says, "Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications." So, and I mean here, you know, he's talking in particular about prayer. So, I mean, this is pretty awesome when we think about when we call to the Lord and we plead. You know, for him on our behalf, you know, this is great because it shows us that you know the the abundant mercy that God can have to us. Mm-hmm. So when we come before the Lord, you know, like our brother said here, not only is he not hasty towards forgiving us, but he has an abundance of mercy. Um, to may, us. may I have one more thing? Sure. Uh, for example, one, one my favorite parable in the Bible is the parable of the prodigal son, because you know, you here you have the father who who symbolizes Jesus, God. And uh, the, the he has two sons, and uh, one of the sons says that he would like his inheritance now. And so once the father decides to give him his inheritance, he runs away to a faraway country, and he goes and he squanders the money. I mean, living life, hooking up with women. I'm assuming getting drunk, whatever. He ends up living with the pigs, if we all remember the story. Then when he gets back, and this is the most interesting part of the story. The father welcomes his son by giving him the ring that of his finger. He gave him the the finest robe that he had, and he had him kill the the biggest, the fattest calf as a celebration because his son has returned. And the other son, who had been there the whole time faithfully, who had never squandered any of the money or any of the things that were going on, he was complaining. You know, when I I've always been here with you, I've always done what you asked me to do. I've worked hard, and whenever I had a you never. You, whenever I had my friends over to have a little gathering, you never even did anything for me. He squandered everything, and now he's back, and you're celebrating it. And th- this, to me, shows that God n- not only uh, forgives the uh, the uh, the sins that you have, 
but he also rewards you for repenting. And of course, repenting repentance is actually a gift from God. And so, as Augustine said, God is crowning his own gift. It's a good point. It's a good illustration. And uh, Luke one seventy eight. Would you mind reading that to me? Just turn to Luke. I say no mercy on the dogs. Get it? <laughs> 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 the brother, get it? <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of the uh, uh-huh. reminds me of the movie Karate Kid. Is like mercy is for the weak. Yeah. No mercy. Yeah. No mercy. <laughs> Okay, ready? Yes, go ahead, please. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us. Read the next verse. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So what do we learn here? We also see that the mercy of God is a tender one. And through a tender mercy... What does he do? He leads us into the light. It kind of reminds me of the the psalm, psalm, the the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think this is a good parallel to that. Mm-hmm. Let's see. If we go to First uh, Kings three six. Uh, six. And, uh, I'll have Andy. Would you mind if I had you read that? All right. Mm-hmm. Actually, I keep asking that, huh? That's that's three, that's what's more bizarre, huh? Three three on that one. I'm testing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm testing Andy, and he passed. He's been consistent. <laughs> Let's see. That was First Kings. Yeah, First Kings three six. Okay. Yes, we. Okay, first Kings three six. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you, and you have kept for him this great steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. But we see that the... Here we see a, the, the greatness of the mercy of God. And that, you know, the reason why Solomon received, you know, the throne was obviously not, not due to a merit, but by the great mercy of God. And as a matter of fact, brother, I, I think that your, your uncle would believe that he went to heaven Solomon mm-hmm. do you know that? because of the next verse look what the next verse says Can I just turned my Bible oh ok no problem it says now O Lord my God you have made your servant uh, king instead of my father David but I am a little child that means he went to heaven mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding <laughs> ok yeah. Sorry for the uh, off tangent there, right? okay. but uh, we're on. Okay, we we just so we just read. I, no, I was First Kings uh, three six, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to Psalm one hundred three seventeen. And I'll go ahead and read that. It says, "But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting." On those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. So where? So since when has God's mercy been? And to when will it be? From everlasting to everlasting. All right. Amen. All righty. So we're getting to the end here, which would be a uh, section four. And I put now that we know of the mercies of God, how shall we live? How shall we live? Excuse me in light of this fact and then let me go ahead and go to the second question to kind of tie it in with the first question can you give some biblical example of God's mercy in the scriptures so you know so knowing you know the different things that we do know of the mercy of God Mm -hmm. what are some of the uh, what are some of the things or some of the cases or stories you know that or examples that you guys can give you know from the scriptures where we see the mercy of God Um, David with Bathsheba 
you know, yes. God revealed this, you know, confronted him with his sin, you know, the penalty for that would have been stoning to death, but God said, you shall not die. Yes. Yes, that's a great example of mercy. Can you got anybody else have any yeah, other examples? Uh -huh. I have one. Uh, John chapter 21, verse 15 and following. This is after the resurrection of Christ, and of Wh course... Which chapter? John chapter 21, verses 15 and following, where uh, Jesus had already ri rose, risen from the dead, and we have to remember that the apostles had actually sc scattered. Mm -hmm. Peter denied him three times. Uh, verse 15, he says, So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. And the interpretation that, that has been given to this passage is that just as Peter had denied Christ three times, Jesus was giving him a blessing, reinstituting him three times as well. No, that's that's a good example. I can think of one that uh -huh. kind of touches both both parts of this question. Um, the lady that was caught in the act of adultery by the people, and then they brought her to Jesus, where you know he was without sin. Stone type of thing. You know what's the problem with that though? It's not in the scriptures. Do you get that? Right? <laughs> and then I'll, I'll allow John to explain it. Explain it to him. It's it's a it's a joke, but well, what happens is that, that, that I guess that particular a particular part of that scripture is, is said not to be in the original in the oldest manuscripts. Do you know that? So the the story of the woman caught in adultery in your bro. Stick to the <laughs> is actually not originally part of the Bible. Yeah, no, that's what it's, that and what what was and what was the other uh, the other there's another well, the, the ending section. of Mark the ending okay. of Mark is is not First John too right there's parts of first oh John but what about seven. you know what isn't isn't also the statement when he's on the cross when it says uh, uh forgive them or, yeah they, they know not no, what they do that's right. yeah they said that that's not also in the original it's right? not originally yeah. Yeah. okay but it, it was a joke but <laughs> you know but but it, it, what what it is in our Bible so. <laughs> uh, continuing at that point, it, it, it is it is a, it is a good example. But it is a, it's a definite the, the thing is then that he says, "Go and sin no more." Yeah. So it's like that's how how shall we live in light of this fact? Yes. Although that you know that does make Jesus sound like a legalist. You know what I mean? Nice kid. <laughs> no, no, but I, no, but clearly, clearly, it is a good example in the sense that that's that that is a heart that we should have. You know, once God has given us, has shown us mercy. You know, by mm -hmm. seeing the fact that he has given us grace, what should be our natural reaction? Go and sin no more. Repentance. You know, yeah, repentance, repentance, turning away from. It. For me, and I think to be honest with you, one of the one of the examples that I see that's really a great example of God's mercy is the uh, the judgment of Nineveh. Because here you're talking about a wicked and godless group of people. I mean, obviously they had their own gods; they were pagans. But we see, you know. The God of gods, you know, our Lord, you know, making an appeal to Jonah to go out and, you know, preach to them, you know, and, and tell them of the condemnation. And obviously we know that he, he, he told them of the condemnation, but I think it's a good example because if you look at Jonah, I mean, look at Jonah, he was, who was he? He was, you know, yes, he was an obstinate man, but nevertheless, was he not a believer? He was a, he was a man of God. And yet look at how, how much mercy did Jonah have? He had he had no mercy. No mercy. Well, I mean, uh, the, one of the greatest examples would be Paul. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to his dying day, he uh, I don't think he really ever forgave himself for the things that he did. Yeah, that's true. That's true. As a matter of fact, you know, that's a that's a good example also from the standpoint of everything that we've talked about. It's a showing of how great his mercy is, mm -hmm. how abundant it is, and, and even how tender it is, mm -hmm. right. because. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, just to finish my point, but but but, the, but you know, but the whole thing with Paul is that you know it, it is an amazing thing. And Paul is definitely a God's craftsmanship. You know, when you see what and the fact that he wrote two thirds of of you know what we have in the scriptures, 
you know and you know the knowledge that the Lord of the New Testament epistles <laughs> well, yes, sorry yes I, thank you for the clarification yes although I, didn't they, don't they say he wrote part of Genesis <laughs> no but yeah. that was um, what was this guy's name Job Joseph Smith Oh. <laughs> yes. No, but the whole thing is, you know, like, yeah. I mean, the Lord, the Lord bestowed so much upon him. Even though, I mean, this was a man who was, what was he doing? He was showing no mercy to the Christians, mm-hmm. that's for sure. And yet, mm-hmm. the Lord, you know, bestowed him with probably the greatest mercy. But I'm sorry, Andy, you had a point before I. I, I, I actually, I interrupted you. But, no problem. Um, well, the story of Jonah even more shows his mercy because you know Jonah didn't want to go, but God. He made him go. Made him go, yeah. <laughs> he didn't leave him to his free will. <laughs> <laughs> and he did have mercy on him. Yeah. He because did. he could have had him killed. Yeah, yeah. You know? Instead well, I mean, being inside the whale is, is actually a pretty good it's way of dying. Big fish, brother. A big sea monster. Get in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, being inside yeah. of a big sea monster yeah. is a good way to die. Yeah. But yeah, you know, but it really is an awesome. It is. It is a really. No, and you know what? So I really, I really like the. If you read the book of Jonah, it's an awesome book. <laughs> The, the book of Jonah is an awesome book and I love it because the way it ends I love the way it ends because you know you have the whole thing where you know you see that the people repented you know they turned in, you know in sackcloth and ashes and, and the Lord spared them he showed mercy on them but yet it's interesting how I like the way he deals with Jonah because it also shows you the mercy he had on, jo- on Jonah because Jonah's there and he sits remember he sits by his hand he he puts up a tent. He's waiting to see if, it's, if you know they're gonna get burned up, <laughs> you know. And, and he's sitting there, and then and then the Lord, you know, says that he what he he makes a plant grow, right? Overnight, you have to give him shade. He's all kicking back on it, enjoying it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it says at night he put a worm, you know, that ate up the. <laughs> so the next the next day, when he's out in the sun and he's like telling God that he wants to die, <laughs> you know, he's like, what a miserable, you know, what a miserable mm-hmm. man. And yet the Lord, what does he do? He proceeds to teach him a lesson. He could have he could have just killed him or you know what I mean or mm-hmm. or punished him severely for that. Yeah. You know? Not or not given him the mercy he gave them, but yet he did. You know? Yeah. Even within Amen. it. Amen. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, we'll go back to the first question. So in light of this, how do you guys say we shall live? How shall we live? Like the great question uh, Francis Schaefer asked. With gratitude. How, yeah. Gratitude. You know, another point I don't think was brought out too much in light of what we've learned about God's mercy is when we sin not to delay going to Him in repentance and confession yes because He is merciful yes yeah and, and that and that would go back to the um, to the psalm actually that Johnny had read I can't remember which one it was was it Psalm 23 Psalm 23 was it the well, Lord or was it s- the one where, where it, oh no I think it was actually Psalm 86 5 right where, oh. where it was dealing with, with you know the whole the issue of his tender mercy mm-hmm. and, and you know the abundance of it, but uh, but it was in light of uh, I forgot the context of it, but um, but yeah, I think I think there there I mean I didn't have enough time obviously to be able to include other verses, and actually in this section I I, I was intending to uh, add some other verses, but one of the one of the some of the verses that I actually wanted to bring was that you know that God also makes an appeal to the fact that since He's merciful, we also have to be merciful. So this is actually, you know, in in a sense, it's a communicable, it's a communicable attribute, and so that's one of the important things that I see is that you know that, that this is, God is a great example of how we should deal, not only actually with ourselves in terms of being grateful and, and acknowledging God's mercy, but even acknowledging God's mercy upon others, and looking at what He does in the life in the life of others, even on those who don't deserve it. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the, one of the things that I, that I also liked about you know the example of the Ninevites that they less than others God hadn't hadn't you know regenerated them you know they weren't they had you know at, at the time or anything they weren't a people of God and yet and mercy. the mercy of God saved them and spared them. Anything else you brethren would like to add to the study? No, I think it goes uh, goes also to the story of the. Uh, uh, the king that had a servant and the servant owed him a huge debt and um, he couldn't pay him and the king forgave him he said you don't have to pay me I, I will forgive you your debt Yes. and then the, that servant went out and saw one of the people that was under him that owed him money and he punished him for not having the money that he owed him mm-hmm. 
and when the king found out about what he was doing to the guy that owed money to him the king then punished him for not having not showing mercy after he had showed mercy and the guy's excuse was well I was going to use the money he was going to give me to pay you what I owed you and I said yeah but I had already forgiven you why didn't you forgive him as well yeah. and uh, he ended up punishing him and uh, I think he gave him all his possessions to, if I remember the story right so I um, mean that was a good deal yeah I'm just kidding yeah. <laughs> no but that's a, that's a great point because you know obviously that's how we have to we got to remember you know if God forgives us we need to forgive others yeah. it goes back to loving our neighbor like Caleb said even though he quoted you know some bad <laughs> scriptures but <laughs> nice <laughs> kid. <laughs> just kidding Mm-hmm. Well, brethren, if uh, that's it, that's going to wrap it up for our study on mercy. Yeah. So, thank you for coming.